Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I've come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I've come to establish peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. On behalf of the entire parish of St. Greg's, I'd like to ask that the person who's been praying for a hot, dry summer stop. This is like a wall, isn't it? Ay, ay, ay. I don't know about you folks, but I am a big fan of what I like to call Plan B. You know what I mean. You got a plan, but you also have a backup because you know it's going to go sideways. And just like me, if you've got a backup, you've got a backup to the backup. I suppose in our world where things go wrong, <clears throat> Pardon me, where things go wrong on a regular basis, it's probably good to have a plan B ready to go. But when you really think about it, these plan Bs often get between us and greatness. It can be a crutch that we lean on. You know, there's no need to expend all of our energy getting the first plan right because we got other plans just in case. But that means that we sometimes end up with three or four okay plans instead of one inspiring one. Plan B rarely achieves greatness. Greatness requires a singular focus and commitment. I'll give you an example. Think of the Olympic athletes that have been competing all week. I'm sure all of you have caught at least a little bit of it on television or on the internet. We're kind of glued to it at my house, so we're having fun. In the Olympics, average doesn't win a gold medal. There's some level of physical ability required, of which I have none, but more than that, it requires a mental toughness in that singular focus. These are the athletes that spend more time in the water or running around a track or throwing a ball or whatever than most of us can even imagine. They give up vacations. They watch everything they eat. They even give up proms. Every single ounce of their energy goes into the effort of getting into the Olympics and then winning that gold medal. And while we can debate whether or not it's worth it, we can't argue with the methodology. Winning a gold medal requires focus and dedication to the exclusion of everything else. And this is where the readings take us today. Following Jesus requires that same singular focus. And that's why Jesus sounds so tough in the gospel today. As Jesus makes his way towards Jerusalem, he knows how it's all going to come out. And he takes this moment to really drive home that point with his disciples sort of seems to be saying, hey, listen up. You need to be focused on this goal. So what is that goal, and how do we prepare ourselves for it? Well, Jesus tells us that in the passages before and after what we read today. So I encourage all of you during the week, take a look at Luke 12 and 13. It only takes about 10 minutes. It's very short. But it gives us the full picture we can boil it down to three things. <clears throat> this is what Jesus tells us we need to do to be successful followers of Christ. 
feel free to call it the gold medal program for Christianity. First, we need to understand that God is at the center of all things, that he has control and not us. Everything comes from God, and ultimately, everything will go back to God. We often get distracted with jobs and families and the new shiny things that we like to buy ourselves all the time. And we forget that God is at the center of everything. This is, important to, to, this is an important thing to remember because although the world can be filled with nice stuff, we're told that we're not part of this world. We're outside of it and we're searching for something beyond it. So the first part of our plan is to remember where the start line and where the finish line is with God and use all of our energy to head in the right direction, back to God. The world sets up a lot of fa false routes and we, can't, and we can get distracted, so we need to focus our energy on it. This leads us to the second part. As we run the race, Jesus tells us that we need to be vigilant and faithful. Imagine one of our Olympic sw swimmers stepping up to the block and then being told that they were about to run a special race. This race could have anywhere from between one and 20 laps. They don't know when it ends. That's sort of the challenge that, we're, that we're, we have to put up with as Christians. We're faced with this issue. We don't know how much time we have so Jesus encourages us to stay focused and practice every day as if it could be our last. If you threw me in an Olympic pool today, I would embarrass myself. Why? Because I haven't put in the work it takes to be successful. The same applies to being a Christian. We can't build a Christian in one day. It takes time and practice every day for a very long time. It's a process where, as Mahatma Gandhi once said, your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. And your values become your destiny. Every day we need to challenge ourselves to make sure that we're doing the right things to achieve our destiny. In the last piece of the puzzle, we need to remember that we are a people of repentance. Jesus' message is one of radical change, and that's really hard for us, way more difficult than winning a gold medal. We're all human, so we fail on a regular basis. That's usually why we have a plan B, isn't it? Some view failure as a bad thing, but I don't. In fact, at work, I like to use the expression that we need to fail faster. We really need to fail more and more because failure begets knowledge. We learn. And when we learn, we're able to refocus our energies in the right direction. This is the message of repentance. When we fail, get up, dust ourselves off, and recommit ourselves to a life with Christ. This is the challenge of today's gospel. Live a God-centered life. Be vigilant and tenacious in the practice of our faith. And recognize the need for repentance in our lives. Just like Olympic athletes practice every single day to take home a gold medal, we need to be prepared to show the same singular focus in the practice of our faith. I think that's what we need to take to our prayers this week, asking, each of our, each, asking ourselves if living a Christ-centered life were an Olympic event, what color would my medal be?